Hello there, everyone. If you're watching this video, then you are part of the TTOR army, an army that is building itself up one subscriber at a time. As you can see from the title and thumbnail of today's video, today we're going to be talking about another person of some prominence that has blocked me on Gab. Previously, I had been blocked by Andrew Torba, the CEO of Gab, when I kept exposing him for the lying grifter and the heretic and charlatan that he is. And I got blocked by Bill Mitchell back when he was on Gab because I kept calling him out for being a censorship-loving authoritarian. And now I have been blocked by Rob Monster, the CEO of Epic, which is not only the hosting site that hosts the domains for Gab and BitChute and has done business with Parlay before and other websites, but it is also the company that is launching Lifeverse, which I discussed in my previous video. So what happened? What did I do that got Rob Monster so triggered that he just had to block me on Gab? Well, let's find out. As you guys can see here on screen, yesterday I made a Gab post where I shared the quarter version of my previous video about Lifeverse, and I tagged Lifeverse in the post, which led to Rob Monster responding to my post directly saying, That's cute. The demons are getting fired up. What the enemy intended for evil, God will use for good. Who needs this? Satan was counting on being able to capture the youth through immersive tech, but Satan, once again outsmarted by the saints, will find himself challenged there as well. So stop your nonsense. So there are two things I'd like to point out about Rob's comment here. One is that he associates me with demons. He's insinuating either that I'm possessed or oppressed by demons, or he's insinuating that I'm heavily influenced by demons, and that's why I'm so against his little life verse project. It's funny that Rob does this, because if you've been following me for a long time, you know that back in January of 2021, I put out a video titled, I Just Encountered a Demon in Real Life for the First Time, where I documented my personal experience of encountering someone who was demon oppressed i've actually seen demons in the flesh in the real world acting through other people i know what demons are like they are liars through and through just like their father the devil who is the father of all lies there is no truth in anything that they say Demons are horrible, evil monsters who lie about everything, and they are definitely not the kind of thing that I like to be compared to because I hate them. I've seen them in the flesh. I know what they're like. I hate demons. I hate them, absolutely. I want nothing to do with them. So for Rob here to insinuate that I'm influenced by demons or that I'm demon oppressed or possessed in some kind of way, that's pretty low of him shows that he has no idea who he's talking to. And it's also projection, because as I explained in my previous video, he's the one who's being influenced by demons. Demons have deluded him into thinking that, yeah, we can build the same kind of satanic technology that Facebook is doing, but, but it'll be okay because we're doing it for the Lord, and we're going to do all these great things. Not realizing the entire time that his little metaverse project, if it succeeds, is going to accomplish the same thing as the Facebook metaverse project. It's going to keep people glued into virtual worlds, and it's going to leave the real world wide open for the globalists to take over and do what they want. He can't see that because he's been blinded by demons. You know, that thing he's accusing me of. The other, and by the way, you can see the bit shoot version here on screen, which has over a thousand views, but I also have a Joshu TV version of this video, and I will include the link to that in the description box down below if you'd like to learn more about my real life encounter with demons. But the second thing Rob said in his little comment was that basically the saints are going to outsmart Satan by building their own version of the metaverse and pulling the kids out of the evil satanic metaverse into the godly metaverse. This idea that saints, Christians, can outsmart Satan is hilarious. No, we can't, Rob. 
Satan is much smarter than you. We cannot outsmart Satan. God can, because he's infinite in all of his attributes, including knowledge and wisdom. There's nothing that Satan can do that God doesn't already have a counteraction to. Satan's not going to win at the end. We all know that. Satan knows he's not going to win at the end. He knows that. He's just going to take as many people with him as he can. But if you think the saints are smarter than Satan is, like we can beat Satan all on our own in the name of God, uh uh-uh, nope, not going to happen. The Bible makes it clear that the globalists are going to eventually get their way and the beast system will go online and Satan will have his run of the earth for a while, a few years, before Jesus comes back and ends it all. But we're not going to outsmart Satan ever, Rob. You would know this if you read your Bible. But I suspect, since you're such close friends of Andrew Torba, that you probably believe that Dominion theology heresy that Andrew Torba believes. So you probably think we can overthrow the globalists and establish a global Christian monarchy on the earth. You probably do think that. It seems likely. I mean, if you really think that the saints can outsmart Satan, you are a deluded fool. It doesn't mean Satan's going to beat us in the end, because we serve a God who is superior. We serve the infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, present-everywhere creator. Satan's not going to beat God. God's going to defeat Satan. He's going to destroy the beast system. He's the one that's going to establish his kingdom on earth. And then we will have a thousand years of peace before the final confrontation and the great white throne judgment. That's the way it's going to go down. But if you think we the saints are going to outsmart Satan, (laughs) you're a deluded fool. Absolutely deluded. Probably by demons. But this is not the thing that got Rob Monster to block me, ladies and gentlemen. What did get him to block me? Well, yesterday, Rob Monster shared a post on Gab where he wrote, What would happen if a whole lot more of Christians cracked the code of what Paul the Apostle figured out? As near as I can tell, he was unkillable. His life was threatened in Damascus. His life was threatened again in Jerusalem. Persecuted and run out of Antioch and Poseidon. Faced possible stoning at Iconium. Stoned and left for dead in Lystria. Opposed and made the center of controversy. Experienced the loss of his close friend and co-worker, Barnabas. Beaten with rods and imprisoned in Philippi. Cast out of Philippi. His life was threatened in Thessalonia. Was forced out of Berea. Mocked in Athens. Athens, taken before the judgment seat in Corinth, opposed by the silversmiths in Ephesus, plotted against by the Jews in Greece, apprehended by the mob in Jerusalem, arrested and detained by the Romans, barely escaped being scourged, rescued from the Sanhedrin mod action, assassination plot against him, two-year imprisonment in Caesarea, shipwreck on the island of Mel- Melita, or Malta, suffered a snake bite, first Roman imprisonment. I think we are about to find out Greater Awakening. So as you guys can see from Rob Monster's post, Rob says that the Apostle Paul cracked some kind of code and that he was unkillable, as far as Rob can tell, and that we are about to find out what that code was, and then he says, hashtag Greater Awakening. I responded to Rob's nonsense by pointing out, Paul would tell you that he was not unkillable and that he only survived all that stuff because the Lord protected and preserved him so that he could carry out the Lord's will for his life. Don't make Paul out to be more than he was. And that's exactly what Rob Monster is guilty of here. There's no glory given to God in this post. He basically makes Paul out to be some kind of uh, Superman. That basically Paul figured out some kind of life hack that made him unkillable, at least for a long period of time. That is not good, ladies and gentlemen. Rob Monster is literally elevating Paul. He's almost creating an idol out of Paul. He's not giving God any glory in this. You look at all this stuff Paul went through, and the response a normal Christian would have is the response I had. Wow, the Lord really protected and preserved Paul so that he could carry out everything the Lord wanted him to do, which was establish all those churches, edify all those saints, write half of the New Testament. 
Obviously, God was protecting and preserving him so he could do all the things that God wanted him to do. That's what a normal Christian would think. Rob, though, is not a normal Christian, probably not even an Orthodox Christian, which is why he tried to elevate Paul. Ooh, Paul figured out some kind of code that made him unkillable, and we're going to find out what that code was. Hashtag Greater Awakening. That is beyond stupid, Rob. That's not something Orthodox Christians talk about. My response to you is the Orthodox response, the biblical response. It's obvious to any student of the Bible that Paul was protected and preserved by the Lord through all that persecution so that he could carry out God's will for his life. So he could plant all those churches and reach all those people, preach to the Gentiles, write half of the New Testament. It is obvious, obvious that the Lord was protecting and preserving Paul. Paul did not crack some kind of code that made him unkillable. That's insane. You're making Paul out to be something like Neo from The Matrix. Paul would condemn you for saying this about him, Rob. As a matter of fact, if you turn to Philippians 1, 19-26, you find from Paul's own words that Paul did not consider himself unkillable. Paul writes, For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ that what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. So here we see Paul say that to live is Christ and to die is gain, and that he desires to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. Paul would rather die than be alive suffering all that persecution because that departure from this world means he would get to be with Christ, which is by far better than being in this world in the flesh going through all that persecution. This does not sound like a man who cracked some kind of code and considered himself to be unkillable because of that. No. No, Paul did not have the same opinion of himself that Rob Monster attributes to him. Paul did not consider himself some kind of code hacker that hacked some kind of code that made him unkillable. Uh Uh-uh. No. Paul would rather have died earlier than he did because then he could have gone to be with Christ much sooner than he did. That was Paul's stance. That's not the kind of thing you say if you cracked some code and considered yourself unkillable. So, because I pointed out the obvious to Rob Monster, Rob Monster went ahead and blocked me. Because as you see, when I'm logged in as TTOR and I go to his profile, it gives me the profile unavailable screen here, which is what you see on Gab when someone has blocked you. So, yes, Rob Monster is doing the will of Satan by creating his own version of the metaverse that's going to keep Christians in virtual worlds when they're pulled out of the Facebook metaverse or any other metaverses controlled by the globalists that pop up. Uh, He's doing the will of Satan when he creates something like that. And when people point out the obvious to him, he accuses them of being demons. Because as you saw in his original comment response to my quarter video, he associated me with demons because the demons are getting fired up. So he basically accused me of being a demon, and then when I pointed out to him that he was lying about the Apostle Paul being unkillable, and that Paul would never have gone along with something like that, Rob's response was to block me on Gab. So that's who Rob Monster is, ladies and gentlemen. A heretical Christian who idolizes men over God, who's literally willing to elevate the Apostle Paul to a level of authority and glory that Paul never would have ascribed to himself. Paul would condemn Rob Monster today if he was here. 
So now that we know what an unsaved, demonically influenced person that Rob Monster is, I hope you, the body of Christ, will steer clear of this guy. This guy's not your friend. He's not a champion of Christians like he claims to be. He's not doing you a favor or a good service when he's creating his own version of the metaverse to keep you in when you're not in the Facebook one. No. No, he is not your friend at all. Steer, steer far clear of this guy. Have nothing to do with Rob Monster. 